Hi there, everybody. Welcome to the Scott Show. This is the SummerSlam show. Uh, we're getting all excited because uh, SummerSlam just happened from the Barclays Center in um, New York, Brooklyn, New York, uh, to be exact. Got to be exact with this kind of thing. But it did happen, and what a show it was. It was only 16 million hours long. Uh, the pregame show started this morning at like 7 o'clock in the morning. And if you believe me, I might be able to sell you the Brooklyn Bridge. All right, but it did start early. It was a 4 o'clock start time, I think. Um, and it was a minimum four-hour long show, the main show. But they did have two hours ahead of time. And they did end right around the 10 o'clock mark. It was pretty damn close. The ending would have been cut off if it was regular pay-per-view. Uh, but since it's not regular pay-per-view anymore, since it's a network, um, they're good to go. So that's what's going on with that wonderful setup that they had of six hours of um, stuff. And I did hear on the pre-show that there were some messes, uh, there were some stuff that was messed up um, with The Miz kind of going it where a whole bunch of fans were not. And it looked funny from what from what I had seen. The fans weren't even in there yet, and the Miz came in, and they're like, "Oh well, everybody's still waiting to get inside." Well, you know, when you put on a match with the Intercontinental Championship um, title holder, even if it's not for the championship, the Intercontinental title holder is the Miz, and he deserves a lot more respect, I think, than a match. At the beginning of the pre-show of probably what is... It's at least one of the big four. And it's definitely the biggest party of the summer. But you don't put your Intercontinental Champion in the first freaking match of the pre-show. I mean, it just... It depresses me. And there's... They could have had John Cena and Baron Corbin here. And, and I would have been fine. Or they could have had that... Um, Rusev, Randy Orton thing, which I sigh about, but I'll tell you guys all about that later. Um, I don't really know how I did today with with picks. I sure as hell love doing the picks, and uh, next time, for the next pay per view in five weeks, uh, No Mercy in Los Angeles, we're gonna do it up, folks. We're gonna have my picks, which I will be doing, and then we're going to go through your picks, find out which one was better. And the winner, the person who gets the most right, gets the joy of winning. It's a wonderful, uh, wonderful thing that you get when you, how you feel when you win something. You'll get the joy of winning. So that's all for checking out the Scott Show and the SummerSlam results. So, getting back to the pregame show, it started. It did start out with the Hardys and Jason Jordan against the Miz to Raj with Curtis Axel, Bo Dallas, and The Miz. Um, I did not see this match, or else I would have been laughing my butt off over the whole Miz gets there early thing. Um, but I do want to thank LordsPain.net uh, for being one of my uh, things that I use to read results uh, when I miss shows or when I'm just uh, gone from that minute. I can kind of catch up. And the Miz Taraj actually won this. Um, the Miz pinned Jason Jordan. Uh, so now that's 50-50 booking it back and forth. Um, I don't really know where they're going to go from this. Maybe Miz and Jordan at the... Um, at No Mercy. Um, but they do have five weeks. It's not like they have to turn around and have two weeks now. And then they could have the Hardys against the Mistraz, and I don't, I don't really know. Uh, maybe next time they should put the Intercontinental title on the line. Do something, mix it up a little bit. Do something that will be like, hey, this is an actual important match, and make the Intercontinental Champion more important. <sighs> it just depresses me that we can uh, sit here and have. You know these uh, these guys set up like this. Just I I don't even know what to tell you on that. But we can go to the next match, which was and do I do apologize for some of the little uh, 
stuff I have going on here. But that's just what happens. Um, Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose have a little chat in the social media lounge. Uh, that was cool. And then the Cruiserweight title match, Tozawa versus Neville. A little surprise out of that. And I'm not really going to go into too much of the matches that I didn't see, which was all of the pregame show. Uh, but Neville actually pulled out the win, and he is the new Cruiserweight champion, being Tozawa. Um, I did see on Snapchat, Snapchat had a thing with uh, SummerSlam on it, and I did see the red arrow as he was going up for the pin, and it was pretty damn awesome. So I will say that I was impressed. And it did happen because I was actually at the gym, if anybody really wanted to know. I was at the gym when this happened, um, the pregame show, and then I had gone and uh, came back. Well, I did see the Elias Sampson thing because I turned on my phone, and I thought it was hilarious. Uh, I thought Elias Sampson was funny as hell. So I'm uh, very interested to see what they do with Elias Sampson again. And I, I just, I thought it was funny. I mean, he sang songs, and he was entertaining. You know, if wrestling is entertaining to me, um, well then, damn it, I'm going to enjoy it. And and I enjoyed this actually. I I had a lot of fun watching uh, watching this little back and forth thing go on. So it was it was fun for me. So and then they had the SmackDown Tag Team uh, match between the Usos and the New Day. This is for the Tag Team Championship of the World. And um, I hate to tell you folks, this was a pregame show, so I just kind of let you know what happened. The new champions, the Usos. And, and I just don't see it. Um, it's just one of those things. So, oh well. The next thing that happened was actually pretty funny. It was uh, something set up um, with KFC and the branding. Is They had um, all these WWE superstars come in and say, Okay, well, you, you know, you're the, you're the Kentucky Colonel. You know, you're the Colonel. You're the Colonel. And then they came up with the new Kentucky Colonel, and it's the Heartbreak Kid Shawn Michaels, and he comes out dressed up as the KFC Colonel. Oh my god. So crazy. So crazy. Funny. But, yeah, it just amazes me how the pregame show went. Um, I yawned because the Uzos won, and I have to talk about these next two matches. So, if you wonder why I was yawning, it's because I had to talk about the Uzos and the next two matches coming up here. Starting with Baron Corbin, the former Mr. Money in the Bank, versus Yawn Man himself, John Cena. Um, so, it, it, was, it was a match. I was uh, really... I was kind of listening to the crowd because they were a little off. They, you know, they still stand. They still said Cena sucks and you know um, all this other stuff. But then they chanted, "Where's your briefcase to Corbin?" Which I thought was actually kind of funny um, because it really pissed him off and it gave him that heelistic uh, way of acting. I don't even know if heelistic is a word, but hell, I'm going to use it. It's my show. Uh, so. They they actually did like this five knuckle shuffle thing. Um, talk about the stupidest move in the world, you know. I just want to smack him with a, pay, a plate of glass that makes him bleed out when he says, "You can't see me. I can. You're an idiot, John Cena." And if you read my personal Twitter, I got a lot more to say about John Cena, and your kids shouldn't be reading my personal Twitter. Just saying. Um, John Cena wins the match. I don't care. All right, so next match um, was the women's title match between Natalia and Naomi. Um, Naomi, you know, I I just don't get it. I don't get how someone with, you know, the, first of all, they have, um, I, I can't really call him Mr. Personality because he would have to have one, John Cena. He's just terrible. Um... And then they have Naomi come out, and you know she comes out to this loud music, and and I've 
I've noticed something in life, folks, and this is just a little something I want to share with you. When people have loud music in their in their lives, mainly when John Cena comes out to the annoying part that's the best part of his song because the rest of the party sings it and he sucks at singing almost well he more than he sucks at wrestling and he sucks at wrestling and I'm gonna probably say that a lot. Um, and then Naomi comes out to this. Uh, dance, fever, uh, whatever music. And here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say that people who come out to really super loud music that's overbearing and covers... It, it sometimes covers up their other mistakes. It covers up how terrible they are in the ring. And, you know, there's, there's a few wrestlers that come out and they got the loud music, but, you know... You watch a Shinsuke Nakamura, for example. He comes out to the violins and you know all that other stuff, and he he has the movements to go with it. Naomi does too, but I wish that she could do something and move some way that didn't look like I owe her a dollar. Oh my God! I mean, just terrible. It sucks so bad. Um, oh, I I don't even know, but. The great news out of this is Natalia got the sharpshooter on her. It didn't look like a great sharpshooter, mind you, but Natalia's got to work on that a little bit. Since she is the new SmackDown Women's Champion, Natalia holding the gold loud and proud. And, um, well, I had posted on Twitter. I'm going to say it uh, live here, and uh, maybe you might want your kids to cover their ears. I said that I don't want to feel the glow because I don't know where she's been. Um, so, there you go. And, uh, Natalia wins. No money in the bank. Um, Carmella coming out. Um, if Naomi does win the title again, then, uh, hopefully Carmella comes out and beats and wins the title. Um, that was the only thing I was hoping out of here is either Natalia was going to win or Carmella was going to win. Um, I just hope to God we don't get a rematch. So, the next match we have is the Big Show and Big Cass. Um, Interesting thing here, Cass, or uh, Enzo Amore comes out first and does his little spiel about having zero dimes. And uh, I don't know how many times you've heard that, but um, it's been many, and uh, it's been many times. And I don't want to hear it again. I really don't. Um, It's just one of those things I'm like, I'm... I used to be really big in Enzo and Cass and really excited to see them as a tag team. Now I'm not, and now they're not even a tag team, so I'm just kind of like, eh, don't care. Um, big Show came out, his hand was hurt, uh, so they did that whole thing. Cass, uh, you know, put on a pretty good show. I thought Big Show and Cass put on a good match. Uh, Enzo Mori decided to uh, try to strip down and put oil on himself to get out of the cage he did he got out of the cage immediately came down um i was actually wondering what the hell was going to happen that he had all that oil on his hand and yet didn't slide his hands didn't slide off the cage when he was trying to hold on to it so he must have he must be a lot stronger than i think um and i give enzo amore a whole bunch of uh, credit for what he did but then he just fell off the cage, and Cass rearranged his facial features. I think his nose is somewhere where his eyebrow is. Um, and Cass won the match. I, um, you know, if you're gonna have somebody like that slide out of there and make this like this big thing, make it bigger than he just gets out of there and gets his face surgically re- you know, rearranged. Um, that was kind of crap, but, you know, it's whatever. Um, and then the Raw brand comes out, you know, they did this thing between Angle and Brian, which was kind of funny, and I, I enjoyed it. Um, and then you had Randy Orton versus Rusev, and Randy Orton came out, Rusev beat him up from behind, um, the bell rang, and then RKO for, like, the second, it was a six-second win, for Randy Orton. It was a bunch of shit. And I'm going to swear one time. I, mean, I might a few times on the show. But it was. 
It was a bunch of crap. Rusev lost the match in six seconds. And the match was still better than the John Cena match and still better than anything Naomi ever did. Uh, Randy Orton wins the match. Uh, You know, I don't know what they're going to do with him next. Uh, You know, I'm hearing rumors and innuendo about them moving, doing another um, shake-up or something. If they do, Randy's got definitely got to stay away from Jinder Mahal. Um, Randy against Brock might be an interesting match, but you know who, who knows? And um, yeah. So anyway, <sighs> moving on to the next match, the Raw Women's Title match, the more the better um, women's title. Even though uh, Natalia is the champion, so she's pretty freaking awesome. Sasha Banks, Alexa Bliss, what a great match this was. Um, It was. It was great. um, Entertaining. These girls could go. They could fight. Um, Alexa Bliss just doing some awesome uh, moves and just hanging with the the boss, with the legit boss, Sasha Banks. However, Sasha Banks gets the bank statement out and wins the Raw Women's Championship. And so far, all the titles have changed hands that have been up to play. Um, the thing with the thing with this is the bank statement really didn't look all that great. Um, so, you know, if you're taking a picture, it didn't look all that fun. Um, plus, Bliss has this big thing for No Mercy, so you might see some kind of match between... Sox, Sasha and Alexa and you know who maybe some, maybe they'll add somebody uh, but that's going to be freaking awesome so uh, Sasha Banks your new WWE Raw Women's Champion so your next match and I do apologize we are going 17 minutes so far I'm going to try to just go boom 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 kind of hit the high notes of what happened um, so this match isn't going to get a lot of them. It's Finn Balor and Bray Wyatt. Um, I love myself some Bray Wyatt. I think he's awesome. However, he's Bray Wyatt. He's not... He is a WWE superstar. He's not bigger than what we can do with him. And I don't get it. But I probably won't. Um... And Finn Balor comes out as a demon. So who's going to win? Finn Balor. And he did. He won the match. I mean, you know, what are you going to say about that? And then you have the Raw Tag Team Championship match. uh, Ambrose and Rollins versus Sheamus and Cesaro. Now, this is probably my second favorite match of the night. Um, I'll get to my favorite match later on. Uh, The reason it was so good is because all four of these guys can go... Um, they really beat the hell out of each other. It looks like an actual NXT match. Um, I was really happy to see um, Ambrose and Rollins back. I was a big fan of S.H.I.E.L.D. when they came out. Um, I think these four could have a really entertaining match uh, again. And so I don't even have to say who won the match uh, to tell you that I really want to see them fight again. But I will say... Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose, your new WWE Raw Tag Team Champions of the World. And, of course, it happens again. Another title change hands um, on SummerSlam. So, no no one has retained so far. Now we get to the uh, the United States title match. Um, Kevin Owens and AJ Styles. Now, Shane McMahon took like four or five bumps. Uh, Some of them look kind of brutal. The one to the outside, I think that he... um, If anybody's ever been in a wrestling ring to protect yourself, you have to hold one of the ropes. Uh, You just kind of want to do that anyway. Make sure you have something to fall back on and something to hold on to. Uh, I don't know if he did on that one, and it looked really terrible. Um, Other than that, yeah, he took like four or five bumps. He got in Owen's face. He got in AJ's face. Um, at the end of the match, though, uh, the big thing was uh, how much he really got into Owen's face uh, over a three count where the leg was on the rope. And I always love with the leg on the rope. Um, I've always kind of liked that 
style of how they can uh, do that in a wrestling ring over the fact that they would have um, be on like a mat. So the foot uh, the foot was on the rope, and he pinned one two three, but then he called it off, and Owens was pissed, and shoved Shane. Shane shoved him. They should, and then AJ kind of took it from there. Now AJ Styles wins, and is the first champion to retain his title at SummerSlam. Uh, the next one to come out. Uh, with the WWE World Championship. Now this is Shinsuke Nakamura, the artist formerly known. Or, yeah, he might just come out as a symbol next, but right for right now he is Shinsuke Nakamura and Jinder Mahal, the modern day Maharaja. I am just excited that I can, anytime I talk about SmackDown, talk about the modern day Maharaja, Jinder Mahal. Um, and say it or how they say it, and kind of roll your roll your tongue a little bit, because he actually is a good wrestler. And I was watching some of his stuff. I watched uh, his workout video um, a little ahead of time that WWE posted. The guy is freaking built like a shit brick house. And there, I swore again, it's 10:45 at night, so deal with it. But Jinder Mahal, Shinsuke Nakamura, they had a great match. And then it happened. You had the Singh brothers interfere. And I thought that it, it just makes Jinder Mahal, the modern day Maharaja, uh, look bad. Um, and it does. If anybody watched any of his Orton matches, the Singh brothers were all over there. I know he's supposed to be heel, be a bad guy. I really wanted Shinsuke to win this time, but Jinder Mahal. Uh, I'm not going to say it again. Uh, I might in a minute. Um, but Mahal wins the uh, WWE Championship since the Singh Brothers came out and interfered. I'm hoping to see them fight again at, I think, Clash of the Champions, if I'm correct. If that's SmackDown's next pay-per-view. I might have to, might have to check what SmackDown's next pay-per-view is. Because uh, I don't know. I think it's Clash of the Champions. But I would love to see uh, Nakamura fight again uh, with Jinder. I thought that they put on a really good show. Uh, let him fight in a cage and hell in a cell or however you want to do it. I don't care how you want to do it. Just give me something good. And by the way, it is October 8th, hell in a cell. Uh, so I didn't even know that and I called it. And by the way, the Hell in a Cell is in the Little Caesars Arena in Detroit, Michigan. They are probably going to have some kind of pizza match. And then October 22nd, uh, they're in the Target Center in Minneapolis, Minnesota uh, for that uh, that pay-per-view. So that'll be another fun one, too, the Target Center, Minneapolis, Minnesota, for TLC, Tables, Ladders, and Chairs. That is a Raw-only event. Um... So there you go. So little insight to what's uh, what's going on there, folks. So just getting back to SummerSlam, Jinder and Shinsuke fought in the match. I think they'll have a rematch again. I hope that they do. I hope they don't pull it off like the whole Joe thing uh, from Great Balls of Fire. Um, but I'd love to see it again. And it might be in Hell in a Cell, um, just like. Have the Singh brothers, like, handcuffed to it and don't have Kali come out. And then you'll be fine. Uh, I don't I don't know what they're doing with Jinder being champion, but if they're turning India soon, then that's probably why he's champion. All right, so we've gotten 24 minutes on this. I'm probably going to take the next five and talk about how awesome this main event match was. Um, the fatal four-way... For the Universal Champion, we had Samoa Joe, Roman Reigns, Braun Strowman, and Brock the Beast, Brock Lesnar. Um, and yes, if you're listening to me in your car on a Monday morning, I just got really loud, didn't I? And now I'm going to get really quiet. But then I'm going to get really loud again, and that's what I do all the time. Uh, so we had Braun come out first. He got a really great pop. Samoa Joe came out again. He got a great pop. Roman Reigns got a mixed pop. Um, some people were booing, some people weren't. 
And then the Universal Champion Brock Lesnar comes out. And uh, people love Brock. They just love seeing this guy who's going to beat the hell out of people and do it for fun. Um, I do got to say that uh, Corey Graves made probably the best um, remark to the UFC. And I don't know how many people caught it, but they said uh, when he came out, he goes, well, Brock could do whatever the hell he wants. He can even go back to UFC and break some bones if he wants to. And if anybody knows anything about UFC, uh, John Jones, the guy who called out Brock Lesnar, his tag name is John Bones Jones. So there, there you go. I thought it was really funny. Um, so a little entertaining part to it that, you know, it's whatever. Um, so other things that happened in this match, you had um, all four of them you know, fought like hell to each other. Uh, they went through the barricade with a spear, which I thought was really great, and uh, that actually hit Brock. And then Braun picked up uh, Lesnar and put him through a table, and then uh, shoved Joe over another announce table, and, oh, I mean, just holy crap. Um, it, it was absolute carnage of a match. It was crazy. Um, I, I loved it. I I loved it. And the reason I loved it is because they made, tonight, I think they made Braun Strowman an absolute badass. And I swear again on my show, because it's my show and it's after 10 o'clock. If you're listening to this on Monday morning, I'm sorry, you're in your car listening to me swear. But they made Braun Strowman an absolute monster tonight. And they did an amazing job. They had... Braun Strowman beat the hell out of Brock Lesnar enough that he had to be taken out of the thing by a stretcher. When I saw that, though, I knew he'd be back. Um, I don't think that you've had too many times where they've taken a guy out and he hasn't come back. Um, And I think fans will get to realize that it's like, oh my god, it's for real, if they actually never come back. (laughs) Take the guy out. Don't have him come back cut to it afterwards and just say, yo, by the way, folks, you know, we have the victor here. We're hearing from the back. Lesnar will be okay and blah, blah, blah. They they made Brock just look like a beast as they do, but they made Braun look like a freaking monster. It was Godzilla and King Kong and Braun was Godzilla. Um, However... You know, the other two people in there, Reigns and Joe, I I didn't really think a lot of great things about Joe's offense. And I thought the Coquina clutch was kind of a lackluster thing when it's on such a big dude, like a a, uh, Lesnar or Reigns. It was on Reigns for a second, and I didn't think he sold it all that great. And watching them try to just say how big Braun is like he's bigger than everybody else and he's hard to pick up and stuff like that was absolutely freaking amazing again they made Braun Strowman and the most unbelievable part of it was the end and I gotta tell you guys about the end because this is how it goes now the end of the match the final part Brock Lesnar pins Roman Reigns. Now figure that out. Brock Lesnar pins Roman Reigns in SummerSlam. They were reportedly working for on Roman Reigns versus uh, Brock at WrestleMania. I think those plans are probably scrapped when Roman gets pinned clean. You know, as clean as you can in this thing, but Brock took m- way more punishment than Roman did. He nails the F5. He pins Reigns retains his championship I think you're going to see Brock and Braun at Wrestlemania I really think you're going to see Brock and Braun at Wrestlemania if that's not the match it it might even be Reigns and Strowman because they've had such a great blood feud and just let them fight 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 and let do it um, you know just do it up because all four of these guys, I mean, they flew across the ring. They they went everywhere. It was just amazing. Amazing. 
Um, so, if you guys are listening to this after we get 10,000 views on YouTube and we start making some cool, uh, Mundo Cash show on this thing, you will notice that we probably went to commercial a few times because we just gone 30 minutes on this thing. And I don't keep time a lot on this, but it does say it, and I just thought it was cool. Um, so, with that being said, Brock Lesnar, former University of Minnesota, NCAA champion, and... UFC champion, IWGP champion. I know they talked about Nakamura winning the IWGP and the NXT champion. That's because Brock didn't have the NXT when he was there, when he came in. Or else he probably would have held that belt too. Brock Lesnar is your champion. He's your universal champion. Your WWE champion still Jinder Mahal, the modern day Maharasha. You see I got that in one more time. Every other belt changed except for AJ Styles. And No Mercy is looking good. And so is the next pay-per-view, Tables, Ladders, and Chairs. Uh, that's the next Raw and SmackDown pay-per-views. They're both looking fantastic, so there you go. And I'm excited because I got to watch SummerSlam. Um, the last match was totally worth it. Watching Braun Strowman destroy all of those guys was a thing of beauty and I'm just overcome with emotion that I could watch this guy who they're going to build and hopefully get to see him at SummerSlam Braun Lesnar do it up and I don't care if you put it in a cage put it in a Punjabi prison just make sure we can see the damn thing and have Braun win the Royal Rumble I think that's the only way to do it Um, and I think what they should do if I'm fantasy booking is they should have Shinsuke win the title at the next pay-per-view. Uh, have him fight Kevin Owens or, or somebody. And then at the end of that, they have Shinsuke and AJ for the championship at WrestleMania. That's what they need to be setting for. That's what I would set for. Um, so, And I did hear something about John Cena coming over to Raw... Um, I just would love to see Strowman beat the crap out of him. Um, because they need to make Braun the biggest monster ever. And he could be a complete face. And it would be awesome. Because people like Braun because he's freaking strong as hell. And he's real and people love him. So, there you go. That's our Raw recap. Or not our Raw recap. Our Smackdown recap. We're... Or, SummerSlam recap. What the hell? I am so tired. It is almost 11 o'clock at night here. And it is time for bed. Um, But I do want to let you guys know ahead of time that we are um, live here every day now. Every day we are live here doing podcasts, hanging out, chilling out uh, with the Scott Show and the 102550 uh, program that we got going on. We got some great stuff coming up, including tomorrow. Uh, we will have, I believe, and I don't have my notes with me, folks. What the hell? I'm not even ready for you guys. Because um, I know I have some lists set up that we're going to be doing the Scott Show Wake Up Call. And I think that's on Tuesdays and Fridays. And we've got some other stuff popping up here very, very soon. But I don't even have my list. And... Shame on me. Shame on me. If you have listened to the show for 30 minutes, God bless you. And uh, and you're awesome. And we love you here at the 102550 Studios, Scott Show Studios. We're making it happen. Uh, we just need you guys' support um, with all the fun things that we get to do here. We're going to be making tons of content. Um... So check us out on YouTube. That's tinyurl slash 102550. So check that out. Uh, please, 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 please check that out. Uh, we would love you forever and ever if you did that. And also there's uh, some other stuff coming up um, too. We, ha- we have more channels coming up including our football channel which will be launching possibly tomorrow. Um, we'll be launching our football channel and then we have our church channel, um, which is our it's our Bible study channel. Uh, just because I thought it'd be a great idea, I want to do content for you guys. We also want to add in uh, 
extra stuff that I like, and why the hell not? Um, and of course, I said that, and then I said, hey, we're doing church channel, uh, why the hell not? But, hey, you know, whatever. Um, I'm excited for it, because I get to talk about things I like, and that's what I want to do here. Um, I want you guys to like it too, of course, and so any thoughts, feelings, uh, comments, suggestions, anything you guys have, let me know, and uh, we will get that all out for you guys we're super excited we can make content uh when i say we there are other people that are in this uh system of uh, bringing content to you guys um it's not just me i do have uh our it guy dennis uh he'll be helping out uh maybe he'll hold the camera once we get a uh, brand new camcorder um, and we have some other people that are involved, including we have Kyle, who did a great job on the show the other day. And we have Solar, who was on the show the other day. I want to thank them both. Um, they're just wonderful, awesome people. We're going to have more guests. We're going to have more stuff coming up. Let's check us out. It's going to be live on the Scott Show and the 102550.net and 102550 on YouTube. Check us out there. We're going to have tons of content, get tons of stuff involved. And our job right now is to make as much content. You guys can enjoy it. We're going to make some money at the same time and end homelessness. So that's what we're going to do. And we're super excited to do that. So check us out on YouTube and speaker.com. This has been Scott with the uh, Summer Slam Recap Show. I'll be back tomorrow with the Raw Recap Show and probably a few other podcasts just for the hell of it. So you guys have a wonderful rest of your night.